I just need 10 minutes. Steph. 10 more minutes and then I can say I've played for 20 minutes and that will justify me having written the review. They've almost sussed me out. I'm almost rumbled. Stop. It's alright, we can get through this. We can, we can get away with this. Okay. We can get away with it. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's enough. That's enough, Zelda. That's a good girl. Hello everyone. <laughs> James Stephanie Sterling here, a video game reviewer. Today, well, some of you may have seen this episode coming. We will, of course, be touching on my, shall we say, spice inviting review for The Legend of Zelda, The Tears of the Majora's Mask of the Link to the Kingdom of Time. Today we are talking about a particular argument, a particular flavour of rhetoric that turns up whenever a controversial review comes out and the fandom gets mad. Which it always does because the fan base is fucking exhausting. I am the, of this the topic I want to get off of my heaving, productive chest this week is the case of fandoms arguing that a review is invalid because the reviewer didn't finish the game. An argument that presents a real tactical own goal if they actually got what they claim they wanted. Let's look at why and how via the medium of liver and onions. When I was a young NB who thought they were a young boy, I had an evil stepfather. Not evil in a fairy tale sense, not in a bratty, I hate my stepdad way. I mean, he was evil. He was a cruel and abusive tyrant of a man. Once, he forced me to eat something I didn't like. Now, compared to some of his torment, this was low on the list, and commonly practiced even by kinder parents of the time. Though these days it's considered at least low-key abusive to force a child to eat food. Have you ever had liver and onions, by the way? Even many highly unfussy eaters have a distaste for it, but Preacher, that was seriously his name, forced a ten-year-old me to eat it anyway. Hours. I sat at that table for hours. This wasn't like when a child refuses to try something or likes a food and is just being a dick. I tried it. I despised it. Eating it clearly, obviously upset me. He made me eat it. I wasn't leaving that table no matter how long it took, and it took hours, long into the night. I forget exactly how it ended. I think maybe mum had spoken to him, I think maybe eventually he was satisfied he'd done enough harm and let me leave. That was the last time though, I ever ate liver and onions. The last time I ever will. My tastes have changed dramatically as an adult. There's a slight possibility I might even like it again. Lord knows, I live in Yorkshire now, finding organ meat drenched in gravy wouldn't be hard, but the resentment, the trauma, the fact it's liver and fucking onions means I'm never going to touch what was forced upon me ever again. So anyway, I gave The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom a 7 out of 10. Oh! Now I know what some of you are thinking, because Lord knows you fuckers have been telling me your thoughts unbidden for a week straight. You think I did it on purpose, for controversy's sake, for clicks on my ad-free website, or for attention, as if anybody would actually want the harassment of overzealous Zelda fans and their repetitive, boring, occasionally threatening attention. Yes, I once again committed the crime of liking a Zelda game instead of loving it, of saying Tears of the Kingdom was good instead of perfect, of daring to point out some flaws. 
I didn't give it the 9 out of 10 Zelda fans would deem acceptable, or the 10 out of 10 that would actually make them happy, and it's all about what makes them happy, because, let's face it, the developers themselves don't give a shit. It's not like anyone at Nintendo is doing a big cry over some random reviewer giving their ridiculously successful game a 7 out of 10, a good score, for a good game, that is good. No, it's just Zelda fans shitting their diapers yet again and taking anything below a 9 as a personal insult, because they've been deeply fucking weird about review scores going all the way back to when they demanded Jeff Gerstmann's head over his 8.8 .8 for Twilight Princess. Like seriously, even by the wider hardcore gamer standards, Zelda simps, and by extension, the Nintendo fanbase, are out of their fucking minds when it comes to game reviews. The level to which they give a shit about the opinions of online critics, the way they obsess over Metacritic scores as if their very lives are tied to the difference between a 95 and a 96 six is honestly quite disturbing. Only Sonic fans are potentially more unhinged than this screaming horde of thoroughly entitled little shits, and at least they hate me because, even if they are deserved, I give Sonic's games genuinely low scores instead of the respectable one I gave Tears of the Kingdom. Now if you couldn't tell, I very much aim to endear myself to the Nintendo fan community with a reasonable response to their behaviour in the aftermath of my review. Or rather, I intend to address them with the level of reason they fucking deserve. God, I thought I'd be off the hook after that one reviewer had already given it a 6, but apparently not. Apparently that didn't move the envelope, it didn't make the nerve any less raw when I got my jabby little finger on it. Even worse, in all these years since 2017 and my 7 out of 10 for Breath of the Wild, the community didn't fucking grow up, get some dignity, and stop getting distressed over a stranger calling a computer game good. In all those years, they couldn't show an inch of development. And I managed to develop fully lactating tits in that time. Time has moved on. In fact, it's quite funny, as a few of them did try to tell me that my alleged attention seeking wasn't gonna work this time, but I'm far too irrelevant these days for my reviews to matter, all while their fellow fans continue to shower me with comments and replies and threats, and deliver unto me the attention they claim I crave but cannot stop giving to me. Oh, you little sucks. All this to defend a product manufactured by a multi-billion dollar corporation. I mean, good lord. There's sucking Nintendo's dick, and there's getting it bladder deep down your throat. Thank you! Now, I'm not going to relitigate my review and address in good faith some of the banal arguments against it, as I think it's a genuinely great bit of writing, more than capable of standing on its own two feet and justifying itself with the thoughtful, comprehensive critique contained within it. I'm not going over, yet again, how much I think weapon durability should get in the bin, or how downright perverse it is that an open world game full of climbing makes walls slippery when it randomly rains. I don't need to justify my thoughts any more than I have, or make further arguments in my review's favour, and as fun as it is to mock some of the utter stupidity I've received in the comments and on social media, I'm not planning to do that today. Okay, that's a lie, I definitely will be doing that, I'll be doing that quite shortly actually. What I really want to do today though, is address something I've been wanting to address for a long time. Something that the fallout of my Zelda review has provided the perfect opportunity to bring up. Today, I want to talk about why demanding reviewers finish a game before reviewing it is actually a fucking stupid way of defending a video game from negative criticism. That's a separate argument from whether reviewers should do it or not. This is about making the claim as an argumentative tactic. And I'm going to go as far as to say, anybody screaming, you didn't play enough of the game, is a fucking imbecile whose sheer desperation to mindlessly protect their favourite computer game has blinded them to the reasons why forcing someone to keep playing something they dislike is literally going to do the opposite of what they seem to think it'll do. Liver and onions, dickheads. Seriously, I know fanboys, and they are mostly boys aren't capable of much critical thought, which is why they're so confused and angry at critical writing. But if they could engage their fevered brains for just a few seconds, they'd understand how self-defeating their argument really is. As I've very subtly intimated so far, I've received some feeble shit from fans who are more fragile than the average Hylian broadsword, clawing frantic attempts to discredit a review that, for all their screaming and wailing, remains thoroughly published and hasn't gone away. Since I can't resist it, let's do what many of you came to see and go through a selection of the best bits of whiny bullshit.
one of the most unprofessional and contradictory reviews I've ever had the displeasure of reading. The abhorrent language used really shows your intelligence or lack there. Of. It's just common sense that a sheer rock face would be slippery in the pissing rain. As pointed out by other comments here, there is armour available very early game to counteract this slippage. You, in all your gaming wisdom, appear to have missed it. Psst. I literally mentioned the armour in the review. Maybe they didn't read it all the way through. Oh, and they're lying about it being very early game. But nice tone policing. Meh. <laughs> One out of ten review to your review. Feels like you wanted to give a bad review since the beginning. Next time, Nintendo can go and ask you personally what makes you happy so you can give it a ten. You didn't review the quality of the game. You just gave your humble opinion based on your tastes. <laughs> it's not what a review is, is it? The reviewer is doing everything to get some attention. Piece of shit! Garbage review from a freak of nature! Now of all the things that have been said about me this week, that one! I actually find insulting, that one! I actually take offence to! I'm not a freak of nature! These things are medically induced! I... am a freak of science! And if you don't like it, you can suck on double D's! Nuts. You didn't even complete the game, obviously, which is a mark of unprofessional critic. Also, reading your review, are you even an adult? You sound like an immature man-child. Also, do you complain about the intended game mechanics every time you play a new game? How is grinding XP from the same enemies with the same weapon over and over again, Dark Souls style, more fun than the weapon system here? Idiot. You have openly stated you hate Nintendo games. You did this just to lower the meta score. This dude is completely bitch made. Can't even mount a horse, Lamau. I would say that your true gamer card should be revoked, but you never had one to begin with. <laughs> You're off the Gamer Force, hand in your Gamer Badge! <laughs> of course you need some game easy as Gal Ragnarok. So, instead of play, go and watch a movie, you handless man! <laughs> handless. Handless man. <laughs> Those are just some of the comments on my website. I'd go troll the ones I got on Twitter, but as I often like to say, my self-harming tendencies manifest in far less mentally destructive ways. Oh, and of course I haven't included all the obligatory transphobia. Because for as much as I'm accused of making it all about gender, a lot of fucking people make it about my gender. I did see one comment on Twitter that really made me laugh though. Apparently there's some theory knocking about that I used an AI to write my review for me. As if an AI could come up with such bangers as a slick wet slice of vertical vexation. Come on, I'm not entirely sure what they think that even proves. Except I guess it feeds the belief that I didn't play the game for more than a couple of hours hours, or perhaps not at all. Speaking of which, let's get to the best argument these people have managed to yank out of their assholes. Among the slew of comments is a sub-controversy by dribbling Zelda zealots that I would call Heartgate if I were the kind of twat who appended gates to controversial things. See, many detractors have glommed onto the fact that my review screenshots, which could have been taken at any point in time and literally prove nothing about my progress at the time of publication, only has eight hearts at the top of the screen. Eight! Oh, the fucking shame of it all! Why only eight hearts, Sterling? How come you only have eight hearts? Screenshots only have eight hearts. Eight hearts! Eight hearts! Eight hearts! I mean, come on, let's be fair. I had one more heart than the game's review score. That's pretty good going. Now, like I said, screenshots prove nothing without them knowing when, where, and how said shots were taken. I mean, would they have preferred I use late game screenshots? They'd only fucking whine about spoilers then. They ignore the fact that you can play the game for literal days and get so distracted by all the shit you can do that completely 
making shrines to get hearts is only one small part of it. They don't acknowledge that said shrines give you stuff that lets you choose between hearts and stamina upgrades, the latter of which I tend to prioritise, because like the last game, this is the legend of one hit killed her, tears of the one hit killed him, and hearts are more like a joke, while stamina is infinitely more useful, versatile and important. They're so focused on the hearts, they don't look at the fact I've got the miner's outfit on, which can take hours of exploration alone to piece together, using maps found in the sky to locate chests buried in the depths. It's also just the best armour. It glows in the dark, and you dress up like a little ant and have little ant antenna with bulbs on the end of them. It's just fucking great. More importantly than any of that though, Nothing I said about the game in the review was factually inaccurate. And no, whining about my opinion is different from claiming I got objective facts wrong, which I didn't because, to say it again, nothing I said about the game in the review was factually inaccurate. Here's the thing. I played The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom almost all day, every day, pouring dozens and dozens of hours into it. The claims I played it a couple hours, or in the most extreme accusations didn't play it at all, ultimately amount to the frenzied straw clutching of a bunch of sensitive buffoons. V, how long did I play that Zelda game? Oh my god, you played so much of that fucking Zelda game. I would come through this room, right? I'd walk in, I'd be like, hey, I love how you is, Zelda. Thank you, love you. I love you too, it's nice to have you back. Now, whether or not one should finish every game before reviewing it, that's another debate. One that has raged over the course of my entire career, which spans three fucking decades now. It's such a long and inconclusive debate that going over it in detail here is not a compelling prospect for me. Suffice to say, I've made no secret of my policy, one I've applied not just to myself, but to colleagues during my various tenures as a reviews editor for other outlets. You do not necessarily have to finish a game to write an accurate review, you only have to play until you can confidently and factually provide valuable and worthwhile critical insight. Absolutely aim for completion, it's often the default best goal, but I don't consider it a necessity necessity. Why did I say it like that? It's because it says requirement and not necessity. Uh, nece necessity in, in the... Which breeze right past that. Of course, it also depends on both the game and how you're approaching it critically. I mean, there's no hard and fast rule. When it comes to shit games, like really shit games that are immediately shit, like the recently released Gollum, you know how bad it is in the first five fucking minutes, let alone five hours. And I don't think it'd be any fairer to make a reviewer play Gollum all the way to the end than make a child eat liver and onions until the plate's empty. You don't have to finish eating a shit sandwich to know you're eating a sandwich full of shit. Oh, and Gollum is one fecal hoagie. Ugly and slow. I would milk you. The great eye knows. Little Gollum got bread. Anyway, y'all are never going to know how much of Tears of the Kingdom I played. I'm not going to cave to that one weirdo on Twitter who is harassing me to the point of making my mentions unusable until I hand over my save file and prove my innocence to a jury of wingnuts. Guys like him just make me dig my heels in more about that shit. You can whine over eight hearts all you want, the burden of proof's on you and you can't prove how much I played or didn't play, so like, what are you going to do about it? What would it even accomplish if you had raw data? You can't unwrite the review. You can't make me unpublish it. Crying that my screenshots only have eight hearts is rhetorically and practically completely impotent. This brings us to the real thing I'm targeting today. I'm not here to defend the concept that reviewers don't have to finish games. No, I'm here to point out the tactics 
practical stupidity of using that concept to defend a video game from a big mean reviewer what didn't like it. You didn't even finish the game is often screamed through a veil of assumption by gamers furious that a product they're hyped for got a score they deem too low. Hell, sometimes they ironically say this about games they haven't played, attacking reviews of stuff that isn't even out yet. This argument is treated by many phantoms as the ultimate gotcha, the holy grail of self-soothing justice. If they can prove a reviewer didn't finish a game, or just convince themselves of it, they can discredit said review completely. Of course, their triumphant invalidation won't make the review disappear, and it won't stop them being so fragile they get violently angry over a reviewer giving a game a 7 out of 10, so they'll be left with annoying and hollow feeling in their terminally irrational minds when they find themselves unable to move on. But still, they believe in the power of their accusation. The sheer pointlessness and ineffectiveness of the argument isn't what's stupid, however. No, that's not what makes you didn't play the game a fucking imbecilic way to defend a video game from a review. What makes it a strategic own goal is the fact that, if they got what they wanted, and they forced every reviewer to play every game to thorough completion, it would be far more likely to lower a score than raise it. I was forced to eat liver and onions. I didn't like liver and onions before I was made to eat it, and I fucking resented liver and onions afterwards. You can't improve someone's opinion of something by cramming it down their throat, by making them sit at the table all night and finish the plate. I guarantee you that if I felt forced to engage with Zelda's broken weapons and ass-backwards controls more than I felt I had to, if I felt obliged to play more of the bits I thought were convoluted wastes of time, I'd have given it a lot lower than a 7 out of 10. Take Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun, for example. It's a very good game. I gave it a 7.5 and its fans didn't bitch about it. Like the similarly scored, but not quite as good, Tears of the Kingdom, I had a lot of nice things to say about it, but a lot of complaints as well. Chief among them, the fact that its limited weapon and enemy variety meant the game ran out of content long before it ran out of levels to put them in. Bolt Gun starts off hilarious and exciting, an incredibly fun pairing of the ludicrous 40k and the over-the-top 90s style shooter. There's a fucking button dedicated to yelling fanatical threats, a press F to show contempt button. It's perfect. Wait with fear. But over the course of hours and hours, the repetitive gameplay, while never diminishing in quality, grew more and more exhausting. The further I got into it, the more tired I became, the more its little minor flaws began to bug me, and the lower my opinion sank. Familiarity, as this game would appreciate, breeds contempt. And while I still like Bolt Gun, I honestly wish it were a few hours shorter so it didn't outstay its welcome. You invoke my ire. Redfall is a more extreme but perhaps better showcase of how demanding reviewers spend more time with a game doesn't serve that game's interests. My first few hours with Redfall, I didn't hate it. I felt it was a bland, mediocre, minimum viable product of a game, but it was relatively inoffensive to me. After playing it a little while, I came away thinking it was dull, but more or less serviceable. Then I kept playing. I kept playing until I found out how fucking repetitive it was. I kept playing until I found out it had nothing under the surface beyond the most bargain basement basic gameplay loop. I kept playing until I found its embarrassing enemy AI and laundry list of bugs. I kept playing until this inoffensive game had exposed its weaknesses to such a degree, I felt downright insulted by the thing. What started as Redfall is okay, I guess, became, with time, Redfall is fucking shit. I've been party to some fucking dumb attempts to discredit a negative review too. Final Fantasy XIII, one of my earliest reviews to send the community into hysterics, was discredited by some because I said I hadn't beaten the final boss. I'd gotten to that final area, I just did not want to fucking bother playing that last tiny stretch because I had loathed everything up to that point, and it really didn't matter to me. Oh, but it mattered to Final Fantasy fans, who delighted in what they perceived to be a silver bullet. Not one of them stopped to consider that if I hated the game after 50 hours, what on earth would make me turn around and love it after 51? Fucking morons. As a concession, I did watch the ending cutscene on YouTube afterwards. Oddly, it didn't make me raise the score. Oh, and funnily enough, there was another review written by someone who didn't finish the game. 
I think the outlet was IGN, I could be wrong, it was a long time ago, but it came out that their early copy of the game was busted and they couldn't play the final third. Regardless, they published a review anyway, confident that what they played was enough, which it probably was. After all, nobody whined at them, nobody pointed fingers, nobody said they hadn't played enough. The difference between me and them, they gave the game a high score. Because that's what it's really all about, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's not really about whether or not you played the game until the end. It's not about how much you played, it's about how much you agreed with their preconceived notions of what games are objectively good. I could show them a 100% completed save file and it wouldn't make a difference, they'd find something else. As I pointed out in another recent video, these people have such a warped view of reality that they think their opinions are reality. This is why they flip out over reviews that disagree with them. They don't think you're disagreeing with their opinion. They think you're fighting the objective truth of the fucking universe. This revelation about their mindset has only really hit me in recent months, but it explains so much. Like the amount of times we've laughed at people saying reviews should be objective, getting angry because they think there's too much opinion in this review. On the surface, it sounds stupid to accuse a review of reflecting the reviewer's opinion too much. Oh, and don't get me wrong, it is fucking stupid, but we can understand the logic. From their perspective, you've just told them the sun is green. To these types of Zelda fans, a 7 out of 10 isn't just a conflicting opinion, nothing so trivial. It's a glitch in the matrix. It needs to be stamped out, burned off, fucking killed on sight because it's a terrifying anomaly that introduces the threat of what they know to be true turning out to be false. When gamers TM get mad over review scores, they don't think their arguments through, they don't consider how illogical their stated desires are or how infantile they sound. They're lashing out wildly and madly at a threat to their objective truth. Deep down, they don't fucking care how much Tears of the Kingdom I played. They truly don't. They only care that what they think is real, is real. And they will claim anything, no matter how unreasonably, to chop up some onions, dip that reality in gravy and shove it down your fucking throat. Like I say, it's not about whether the game was finished. It's not about whether the reviewer spent enough arbitrary time in the game before giving their opinion in a review that ultimately won't matter and will only have the power that the fan base lends it. A fan base that is, as always, just tiring because the fan base is fucking exhausting. It's good this though, isn't it? Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I had it knocking about in a box, a Hyrule Warriors box set for eight years. Uh, discovered it by accident, didn't even know it was part of the set because I was mesmerized by the scarf that's in it. Um, and it still, still works after all that time. So it's a nice little memento of Hyrule Warriors, the best Zelda game on the Switch. I'm going to go back to feeling terrified and intimidated by the scary Terry Zelda fans. Whatever will I do while they are screaming and shouting about a review for a computer game on the internet? Tomorrow sucks. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make you thank God for me. This week, I'd like to offer a big thank you to Laura Cake Dale at Laura Cake Buzz everywhere for production assistance this week, as well as her lovely subtitles. To my patrons and supporters, whose patronage and support, especially in recent months, is something I'm very thankful for. Thank you to Phoenix for, well, you know. And a thanks so heartfelt there's eight of them, to the super hardcore Zelda fan community, whose contributions this video simply couldn't have been made without. <laughs> Bye!